So in the last part, we have done with the remote interface and we have done with a class which implements that interface. And this class needs to be a stateful is because we are working on stateful session beam. Now to make it work or to check if it's working or not, we have to create a JSP page. So using that JSP page, I will enter some numbers and it will add that numbers into a list. Even we can remove the elements. So what we can do is we can create a new JSP. So right click on your project and say new and click on JSP. And we'll name this file as index because I want to create this as a first file. And we'll click on finish. So once you click on finish, it will give you a JSP file. So this is your JSP file. Let me remove all these extra comments for you. And in this body, if I remove this body, okay. Uh, okay, so let me have that body here. We'll remove that later. Now what I want here, in order to write your JSP code, we have to use a scriptlet, right? But when you would write something in scriptlet, it will add those lines into your service method. Now, when you would want to work with this uh, EJB or stateful EJB, you need to provide something called as initial context. Now, initial context is a class in Java which provides you the initial configuration. Because using this initial context method, you can, you can use a method called as lookup. Now, lookup will help you to search for your implementation. It's because the object I'm, I'm, I will be creating here will be the object of uh, it will be object of a remote interface, and it should get the memory from this class. So in order to fetch the memory from this class, I will ask EJB to do, do that. EJB will say, "Okay, just give me the name of the class. I will do it for you." And for that, you have to use a method called as lookup. Now, what exactly I mean by that is, let me create a a scriptlet. If I write anything in the script, it will, it will go into that method which is service. But I don't want, the, this line should go into service, I want this line to be outside service. Which means I want to create one more method here. That's why I'm, I'm using a declaration syntax here. In, the, in, de, in declaration, what I need is, I need a first object which should be private. And I want it to be static, and the object name here is, it is the, the interface name here is, it is list elements remote and the object I'll be creating here let's say it is uh, let's say values only we'll use this name values okay and we'll declare it here I'm not creating object of uh, list here I'm just creating a reference so in order to f in, in order to import this package what I can simply click on this uh, bubble here and say add import ejb dot list uh, list elements remote which we have created in a package called as ejb <clears throat> now, so when you work with initial context, you have to run your initial context in the first stage of your page loading, which is init stage. Now, in order to work with init, we have to define a method which is public uh, void. So when you work with JSP, JSP says, give me JSP init. And in bracket, you can provide a bracket here. And in curly braces, the first thing. We need to provide here, it is with something as initial context. But there, 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 there might be some critical statement in this block, we'll use a try catch, so that we can avoid errors here. So we'll say it is exception E. And this, I will simply print, it is a system, well, the system dot out dot print ln, and I will print the error here. Simple, right? Let me give a semicolon. Now, in this, I need to create object of initial context first because it will help us to find to use a lookup. An initial context class belongs to a package called Java X dot naming because we want to search for the implementation and I don't want to provide the actual IP address of the server. So you can search a server with the help of a name, and that service is provided by Java X dot naming. So we'll say initial context IC equal to new initial context. Now once you once you got the object of initial context, we can create the object of values. We'll say it is values equal to. Uh, to fetch that those values, I, we can simply say IC dot. So there's a method with IC called as lookup. Now lookup will ask you for the name of your project or for the uh, class. The name of the class is list elements. So we'll say it is list elements. 
okay and this should be included in double quotes because it will search for it okay but this link list interface it belongs to some project right so we have to also specify the project name and the project name is ejb state full now what next now when you when when you want your ejb to search for this class ejb says okay first give me the type of search i want to apply is it a local so it will be a global search or you want some other type of search now what other type we have is something called module level search or you have app level search since as a beginner level we can simply go with global level so we can say java colon global and give will give a slash so this is the type of scope i'm mentioning here so this is my scope here now the problem is this lookup will give you an object but i don't want object of values or the object of object class what i want is it should give me object of uh, list elements in fact list elements uh, interface name is remote okay done right so the, by this we have done with the uh, object creation of value so this is how we can achieve dependency injection so even if you have uh, in future if you move your class somewhere you can just change this path okay so that's the advantage of using this uh, initial context class now what next i need here next i want to take the input from user so how will you how will user enter enter the input uh, for that we need to provide some uh, form tag here so we'll go to body here in this body after hello world instead of hello world we can simply print it is as welcome and in this i will create a bot i will create a form tag we'll say form since i want to call the same form again and again i can just give a form name I will say the form name is uh, we'll say ABC. It doesn't matter what's, a form, what's your form name. And then we'll use a method here. Just to make it more for powerful, I will use a method which is post and form tag close. Now, once you're done with the form tag, what are what are the what are the things I need here? The first thing I need here is a text box where you will enter the data. So again, you can use uh, NetBeans for this. You can simply go to a window ide tool and a palette using which you can drag and drop the elements from here but it's easy to type when you have a simple form so i will say it is input tag input type it should be text then we need to specify the name and we'll say name is uh, t1 okay and we'll use a br tag now what next i need two buttons one button for addition and second button for removing elements so to take button we'll say input type equal to so when you want button you can simply write a submit and you can give a value so first button will be for add and second i need to specify name also because i have two buttons on the same form so we can use this as add number or add num so done with this button also and let's go for last one which is in fact we can just copy this code down and instead of add here we can simply say it is uh, remove not sub we'll say remove and the button name will or the, the name will give as rem num so which is remove num simple so by this you have uh, created your form let me just test this form it's working or not so you can simply say run It will take some time to compile and get get to this uh, get to the container. Okay, it's compiling. starting a server okay so go, let's go back to the code uh, before it runs so we have a text field we have two buttons value uh, so it is add and remove so if i click on add it will it will add the elements in the list if i click on remove it will remove the elements from the list uh, depend upon the specified value so if i give any string type value it will give you an error 
it was taking a lot of time. You know, that's the issue. Let me go to the console. It says Glassfish is starting. Okay. It's taking a lot of time. Simple strokes. Okay. Okay, so it is deployed now. So now it will open that uh, output in Internet Explorer is because I have I specified the default browser as IE. I know it's a crime, but no choice here. We can change it to uh, Firefox also. Okay, so now you can see we are getting a welcome page. And if I type here 5, and once, I'm once I click on 5, if I say add, it should add the element, and the output should be shown something somewhere here. Now, how to how to add that element there and how to show the output that we'll see in the uh, next part.